Spider-Man 2, a game that's known for its breakthrough and realistic web swinging and pizza time. Based off the movie of the same name, this game allowed for free roaming the entirety of New York City. Because of this, players over the years have found a bunch of weird glitches and oddities that weren't supposed to exist. Spider-Man 2 was released across the world for the major consoles at that time, and a majority of glitches in this video will be possible on those versions as well. With that being said, let's tour the city of New York as we webzip right into Spider-Man 2's glitches and exploits. Like any good story, your first started off with the basics. The hauntingly familiar presence of that guy from Spider-Man, or that guy from the Evil Dead, will help guide you through how to play the game, while being confined to a very small area to learn. You can skip the tutorial, but you know what? F*** it, I'm not playing the game. Sure you miss me more than I do. Things have changed around. First things first. What? If you didn't quite understand what was going on, when you hit the token on the top of the building to skip the tutorial, you'll first get a prompt asking you if you really do want to skip the tutorial. But by pausing right before the text box pops up, selecting new game and inputting H. Crayer T, which is just a fancy way of saying Treyarch, you'll unlock everything in the game with the cheat code. However, from here the console has no idea what to do, as it's trying to start you in the beginning of the mission, even though you quote unquote beat it so you're then stuck on the loading screen forever. Once you're done fiddling around with the intro, the game's story will start to progress, having you complete missions to advance the storyline. There are, however, other things to do that isn't the story, such as saving civilians from danger and sometimes certain death. Yeah, it can be quite the hassle when you want to explore the city on your own and you got some frantic person yelling at you because some guy sprained his ankle on the manhole. There are times where you'll need a break from it all, and that is actually possible. When roaming the edge of the city towards the water, you may get a random civilian ask you for help with a sinking boat. To do this, you need to execute a charge double jump to get to the boat and back with each person. If you still have some time left, instead of just bringing the last remaining person to the ground right nearby, bring them to the top of the Empire State Building. Trust me, there's a good reason for this. You can let the person go on top of the building, and whether or not they decide to walk off is up to them. Though, upon returning to the ground, the city will suddenly feel a lot emptier, as there is basically no one left, aside from the traffic that flows through the streets as per usual. You can explore to your heart's content in this newly formed ghost town. It is possible to bring them back as well, as all you'll need to do is find a petty crime to fix, and upon cleaning it, the population will return back from their sudden hiatus. You'll notice that at times when swinging throughout the city, or when helping someone out with an ongoing crime, music will play in the background. You can cancel the music out altogether upon doing either one of two things. Once you beat the game, a couple new options will unlock in any store in the city, which is typically used to buy new upgrades to help Peter become the best version of himself he can be. Upon purchasing the movie theater, you'll find it located in Greenwich Village not too far from Mary Jane's apartment. When playing any of the movies, you can back out and the music for the ongoing mission will stop. On the PS2 and Xbox versions, you also have the option to play the X-Men Legends trailer in the pause menu, which will give off the same effect. It seems likely that the console can't have two similar audio sources playing, so it shuts off the music to play the cutscene audio, which is probably the same audio type. Spider-Man 2 was quite the breakthrough for a Spider-Man game, as it showed the world just how it feels to actually be the friendly neighborhood hero. Having webs attached to buildings and objects, being able to control how fast or slow you swing, pull off sick combo moves, and more. One of the only things that seem to stay similar to the previous title is the camera. There are a few types of camera angles, with one forcing the camera to stay in place while keeping the player in the center of the screen. If you notice one of these camera angles taking place, you can actually move away while keeping the camera in the same spot. This can be done after landing in a body of water and crawling out, or certain missions such as the very first briefcase snatching mission or a black cat chase. The effect will only break if you move with a control stick or perform a web swing. When you first start the game off, this can be pretty limiting as you'll really only be able to jump in place. If you collect enough hero points, you can purchase the web zip which will allow you to actually move away from the camera. 
If you can manage to move far away enough, you may see some parts of the city disappear. You'll probably end up getting the best results by landing in one of Central Park's lakes. Many of the buildings you can enter are only open during the day, as at night they'll close up shop and go home. If you're trying to help stop a crime when near one of these buildings, have the thugs follow you inside and wait until just before closing towards the evening and then leave. There is a chance that the building will close with the thugs trapped inside. You could wait until morning to finish them, but then again, I missed the part where that's my problem. See ya, chump. Of course, there are times where you have to stop being such a hero and spend more time with your friends. Starting in Chapter 6, you can head over to Mary Jane's apartment to meet up with her for a date. Well, at least you were supposed to, though you're running a bit late and have to race across the city to meet up with her. But if you decide to change your mind at the last minute, or just run in circles while being indecisive about what to do, you may see that the access prompt to start one of the MJ side missions will remain on screen. It doesn't really do anything if you're not in front of the door, but it just kind of stays there as a reminder that you need to be more accessible to her instead of running off like you always do. Oh, <coughs> sorry, I got a bit personal there. One of the many new additions that take inspiration from the movie are the photo side missions, involving taking pictures around the city for J. Jonah Jameson. You'll have to go around an area of the city, racing to get to the next photo token, then return back to the Daily Bugle to complete the job. Like a lot of these different side missions, the further in you progress, the harder these missions become. It's a bit unlikely, but over time playing this, you might have noticed that while activating one of these tokens, the prompt to take a picture can remain on the screen. Unlike the Mary Jane access glitch, if you hit X while being away from any of the tokens, it will in fact take the exact same picture from the one you just took, even though doing that will actually skip the last token. What was unknown about this particular bug was exactly why it happened. Over time, players have started taking notice of this rare antic. This is the exact same mindset I had going into it, grinding out the same photo mission for what seemed like hours at a time. That is, until it happened. It didn't seem like much had happened, but it managed to stay on the screen and upon taking it again, played out just as everyone before had experienced it. Not only that, but later on the exact same thing happened with the same token from before. Upon investigating further, it seemed like while crossing this point in the wall, you could take the photo, then the prompt would briefly disappear before returning back on screen on the other part of the wall. What could this mean exactly? That was the question at the time of this discovery. Then it hit me. What if you were to be in range of the hitbox for the token, activate it, briefly leave that hitbox, and then come back? That actually seemed to be the case upon trying it on a different token. It's a bit tricky to pull off in real time, but you can jump dive by holding the left trigger to sprint, then simply tapping jump. Make sure you land so that you're closer to the edge of the token's hitbox, activate it, and then quickly hold the complete opposite direction so that the dupe will be activated. Doing this could possibly benefit some players, including the speedrunners who can complete the shutter bug category in about only a half hour. Impressive. There's one more side effect of this. If you were to, say, perform the dupe on the last token, or activate the dupe on any token but still go to the last token and take the picture, you will not in fact be able to hand it over to the boss. What? It's possible that the game is looking for the amount of pictures you took, but you went one over the required amount to be able to finish said mission, causing all your previous photography work to be null and void. But you can't do this to me. You know how much I sacrificed?! Here's a more popular one. When fighting thugs, you can use your web to throw them across, pull them towards you, or even spin them around a few times. If you purchase the air jump off kick, you'll be able to launch yourself off of an enemy after engaging in combat. Most of the time, if you knock the thug out cold, you can still play around with them. By first launching one in the air by holding the left trigger and then punching, proceed to do these series of inputs. Jump up if you're not already in the air, punch once, use the air jump off kick, and then hold the web button while holding down on the control stick. You'll have to get used to the timing, but if you can manage to chain together these attacks in a row, you'll see that you can constantly gain height. It can be difficult to keep up, but it's amusing to see yourself still hammering away at the thug while midair. Let's have a little more fun with them, shall we? You can clip pretty much any regular thug into a wall. You'll first need to have purchased the grapple move from the store. When fighting a thug, grapple them so you can pick them up, 
walk forward into a wall, charge a jump by holding the jump button for a brief moment, then once you're airborne, press the jump button again while still holding forward. You should perform a wall jump which will clip the thug straight into the wall. I mean, I suppose that's one way to fight crime. Huh? Ooh, that's some view, huh? Tally ho.